Welcome back. This is lesson five of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session 11. And in this lesson, we will see how to serve TensorFlow models with KSERF. So we already saw how to serve scikit-learn models with KSERF. And in the previous session, we saw how to serve TensorFlow models with TensorFlow Serving and Kubernetes. In this lesson, we will see how to put everything together and take the model we trained a few sessions ago in the deep learning session and deploy it with KSERF. So the plan for today is so first we will take the model we trained previously and convert it to saved model format. We have already done that in the previous lesson. We will just redo this quickly and then we will create inference service definition for that and we will use kubectl to apply this inference service definition and deploy our model to KSERF. So let's start. For that, I'll go to our course repo. So in the course repo, actually, I want to go to not for the actual course, but one level up and go to chapter nine, Kubernetes. So this is the code from the book. And I already have here a bunch of instructions. So first we need the model, the Keras model. Let me quickly download it. And actually I did a bit of cleaning. So before everything was in one directory, now I put the example uh, scikit-learn model to the iris folder and then the churn model we did to the churn folder. And now I'll create a fo folder for clothes. So this is where we will put our clothing classification model. Now I'll do, I'll execute this command. So I'm downloading this exception model. And then we need to convert it to saved model format. We have already done this multiple times at least one, we did it last time. So this will be the second time. This is the code we need for converting. So let me create a file, convert.py. I'll just paste it, save it, and then exit it. You can use Visual Studio Code for that, of course, or whatever editor you prefer. Since I'm on a terminal for me, it's just faster to use Nano right now. And then I'll run it. While it's converting, I want to open this churn service that we created with KSERF. What we will do now will be quite similar to this. So let me copy it and I will go to the Clothes folder and we'll create Clothes service YAML. This is the configuration for the inference service for the clothing classification model and they'll call it clothing or Clothes, doesn't matter. And instead of scikit-learn, we will need to write here TensorFlow. And this will be path to the model. And then probably we'll also need to change resources. I think I'll leave it like that. Maybe I'll just give it uh, one uh, whole CPU and then give it half a CPU when it starts. That should be probably enough. But let me double check if actually this is correct. Like if we should put TensorFlow here um, in predictor. For that, I want to go to KSERF repo, go to docs. And then in the documents, I need to go to samples. And in the samples, let me go to this V1 beta 1. And there we will have TensorFlow. Yeah, so TensorFlow here. And yeah, so this in this documentation, we can see how to create an inference service for TensorFlow. So in this example, using HTTP. And remember, in the previous session, we used gRPC for TensorFlow service. So here in this example, we use HTTP. Actually, if we scroll a bit down, there is uh, an example with gRPC. We will not use gRPC here. We will just go with uh, HTTP. And this is the example we need. And as we see, predictor and then TensorFlow. This is what we have. We have spec, predictor, and TensorFlow. And then we have storage URI here, which in this case points to a Google Store location. For us, it will be a file that we serve through Python HTTP service. Of course, if we are in AWS, then we'll put our model to S3. If we're in Google, we'll put this to Google Storage. Right now, because we're running everything locally, we don't want to publish this model to GitHub. So it makes sense just to serve it locally with an HTTP server. I think the conversion happened. So we have the file and we have the folder, this clothing model with all the files. So this is our model saved in the saved model format. So right now we have this clothing model and then all the model files are inside this folder. And since KSERF uses TensorFlow serving internally for serving this model, we also need to follow the same convention as uh, we need to use for TensorFlow serving. And it means that we will need to put the version of the model in the path. So let me quickly check how we did this for TensorFlow serving. Yeah, so in this case, what we did, the path was models slash clothing model slash one. We need to create this slash one directory and then move all these files in this slash one directory. So let me cd to this 
directory and then I'll create a directory, I'll call it one. And then what I'll do is I'll move assets, the saved model and variables to the folder one. Everything is here now. And now I want to package everything to a zip archive because here we will specify a URI, a URL, and this URL has to be one file. In this case, we can create a zip archive or a tar zip archive, and this inference service will see that this is a zip archive. It will download it, unpack, and then we will be able to use it. So let me use a zip command for that. Of course, if you have something like Explorer or no tools or whatever, you can just use that like graphical interface to package everything. I'm on a German so I'll use terminal for that. Hope I'll get this right. So it's zip, then um, everything that we have. I think now we have the name. Let me try it's, uh, all thing model zip and then star meaning we want to package everything. Let's see if we got it right. I think I would like him. Oh, so we have this here. And if I go to this HTTP server that we have here. So I'll go to clothes and then clothing model. And then this is the archive we need to use. What I'll do is I'll put it here. So it's so rich URI and then this location. And we need to replace localhost with this IP. Just in case I'll put this in quotes. I don't think it's actually needed, but because this one has quotes, I'll also put quotes. This IP we can get, uh, just to remind you from if config, or if you're on Windows, you can use IP config on Linux is if config. And then I think it's this F0. Yes, I think the address is the same. So I think the resources uh, make sense. We'll give it one CPU and half a gig of memory. I think should be sufficient. So now let's apply this configuration and see what happens. So let me go up and then do kubectl apply minus F and then the service. Well, it was created. Let's check if it works. Kubectl get isvc. It seems to work. So let's check if all the pods are running. Kubectl. And by the way, I removed the churn model from here. So that's why we don't have the churn service here. We have only one. So kubectl get pod. And we have this clothes predictor model. So it's already running. Let's take a look at the logs. So it's logs, this one. I think we also need to do case serve. Was it container? Yeah. Now let me add less. Let's see what's happening here. So it successfully loaded the model. So this is the this model version one. So we created this slash one folder. It was able to read it from here. And then we give it the name clothes. So yeah, it successfully loaded the model. And yes, yeah, so it's already running gRPC on this port and HTTP on this port. Seems like everything is fine. So let's test it. So for testing, I want to use Jupyter. Let me start it because it will involve a little bit more work than when we were deploying a scikit-learn model. So it needs to be a little bit more interactive. So let me start uh, Jupyter. And I'll create a notebook, I'll call it test, perhaps. And what I need is requests. We have our model. This model is the raw model. If we go back to this um, diagram here, we got that part. So that part is running, but this is our raw model. We don't have any pre-processing, we don't have any post-processing, so we still need to have this pre and post processing part. Like in the previous session, when we were deploying our model with TensorFlow serving, we needed to invoke it from Jupyter to see how it works. This is exactly what we are going to do right now. So we are going to see how we can actually invoke this model from Jupyter, how we can prepare the image that we have and how we can get the predictions and how we can process the output of the model, the predictions. So let's do that. And I think what will be helpful for us is the code we used in the previous lesson. In the previous session, let's, let me open it. This thing here. So what we used here is uh, this Keras image helper. We don't need gRPC here. So we don't use gRPC, we use HTTP. So we don't need all that stuff, but we need Keras image helper. So we will have Keras image helper. Now let's create a preprocessor and then get our image of pens. So we have this X. So this is the pens. 
And let me also look at how the requests looked like for our churn model. If I open this churn test, now we have this code. And this is how our request looks like. So let me copy it. And in the request, we have these instances. Remember, this is our capital X. So here it's not actually a matrix, but because we have a pipeline, this pipeline has ticked vectorizer as the first step of the pipeline, which turns this list of dictionaries into a matrix. But here, this X is already a matrix tensor. And the shape of this tensor is this one. It's already a batch. We have one here. So what we can do is we can just put X here. And because X is an umpire array, it's not serializable. We need to do to list. And this will be our request. Now we need to send this request to our inference service. And let me take a look at this again. This is how we actually did this. So this service name will be clothing. Clothes, I don't remember. Yeah, so this is clothes. I, mean, I don't think we need to change anything else. Also needs this part. We have sent a request to our model deployed with KServe, which uses TensorFlow serving internally. And this is the prediction we got. It's actually less code than what we have here because we don't need to deal with protobuf. And yeah, since we're here, let me copy this part as well because this is what we will need to do right now. We will need to do some post-processing and let me actually do JSON here. And then I'll have predictions, which is response response and then get predictions. And because there is a, a list of things, I will need to get uh, the first prediction. I'll just call it pred and it will be zero. So this is our predictions. And now we need to zip it with classes. Dictionary zip classes. So here are our predictions. This is very similar to what we did before, except this time we sent an HTTP request and this is how we prepare this request. So we turn our tensor into a list, and then we put this into a request as JSON, and then we send it over to this service, to TensorFlow Serving, and then it scores the image and gets back the predictions. So there is a bit of overhead because we use JSON, not uh, gRPC. So the request body is larger, but that's okay for now. It's not always a bottleneck, so that's fine. Okay, so that was actually not that much code. So let me turn this into a script. Now, when I was putting together this code, it was easier for me to use Jupyter. But later, when we'll invoke this, it will be simpler to just write Python test. Now, let me stop Jupyter and do Jupyter nb convert to script, and then it's test. Let's open it. So this is our file. Let me clean it a little bit. So I will put this at the beginning. So this is our configuration. Then now we have actually two URLs. So let me call this service URL. And the other URL would be the URL of the image. And we send the request to the service URL. So I don't need that. It's our classes. And this is our predictions. And I'll just print that. Okay, so this is our script. Let me test it. No, yeah, and it works. We were able to deploy our clothing classification model to KServe. We were able to send the request to this model. But again, we, like in the previous session, we did all the pre processing on the client side, pre processing and post processing. And this is not ideal. We don't expect the clients of this service to actually do all that which is why we want to put this logic to a component in front of the model that will take care of all this pre and post processing. And what the client will need to worry about is just sending this URL of the image and then getting back the predictions. So they will not need to take care of downloading the image, resizing the image, converting it to like doing 
pre-processing and so on. So we want something to take care of that. And in case serve, this something is called a transformer. So what we will do in the next lesson is we will see how we can add this transformer. In case serve is actually simpler than in plain Kubernetes because we will not need to create an extra deployment, an extra service for that. We can define that in the same YAML file where we define our predictor. So in the next lesson, I will show you how to do this and see you soon.